number four. The destroyed reactor four is here, right? The first, the primary thing after the accident was to ensure the safe operation of the unit number three. You know that these reactors, three and four, they were constructed in one of the same building. Yeah? They had common systems, common equipment. That's why it was necessary to separate, to ensure, yeah, to ensure the safety operation of unit number three. That's why this very wall was constructed between them. It's very thick. thick. So two, three meters in some places thick, right? Yeah. Now we are near the memorial. It's a memorial to Valery Hodimchuk. He was there senior operator of the main circulating pumps. You know, 30 persons, 30 persons, that was the shift, the night shift of unit number four. These very people, they worked on that very night at unit number four. 29 of them, they were hospitalized, being extremely highly exposed Right? Having radioactive burnings, they were hospitalized to the clinics of Moscow and Kiev. He, the only one person who was not found, yeah, who was not found, maybe he was in the area of a very high temperature, maybe he was in the area where the structures were collapsed. Mm -hmm. His friends, his colleagues, they tried to find him within two days. But imagine how highly were the levels of radiation just after the accident. Yeah, some of them got not one less of those. Well, they were not a success. They didn't find him. So they destroyed reactor four. It had become a, the so-called the last home for him. Right nowadays, his family his children, his widow, they come here, they have no any other place to honor the memory of their father, of uh, husband, yes. So, symbolically, it's his figure, right? And this is the left hand of his widow. It's a tradition already, yeah? They come here in April days to honor the memory of Valery Khodimchuk. In such a way, they are together now. You see, and that is the memorial not only for him, for all those who died, for all those who didn't leave their working places, who decided to do everything possible and impossible, yeah, to renew the control over the situation. Yeah. who realized the risks perfectly well. They were not newcomers, they were natives. Yes, they saw by their own eyes what had happened. They saw the destroyed reactor. They realized the risks for their health, for their life. But they didn't leave their working places. They continued to fulfill their duties, their responsibilities. And the price, the price of the... In one of the documents, I have found such a figure. The total damage of the Chernobyl accident, including everything, the total damage. It was estimated by the Ministry of Finance of the Soviet Union at that time, and it was 20 billion Soviet rubles. Mm, Just imagine, 20 billion, yeah. But the highest price which we paid it was the price of human's life. Yeah, human's life. 
Okay, let's go. Better to come here. The level of radiation in this area is higher than here. Come here. So Valery Hodenchuk was the senior operator of the main circulating pumps. Yes. Here you can see the main circulating pumps of unit number three. Like these are unit number three circulating pumps. Four in the north and four in the south. The reactor is between them. The rack is here. Rack number three. Reactor number four is in this area. <coughs> Usually eight main circulating pumps were at each unit. Eight. Yeah. They were designed to ensure the circulation of a coolant water in a primary circuit. Yeah. Very powerful devices. Yeah. 7,000 cubic meters of water per hour. Yeah. The electrical capacity 5.5 megawatt. 5.5. You can you can see only part of it. A height of which is 16 meters. By the way, you can go to this very balcony. Yeah, just to have a better view, to take a picture and do that. Okay. <laughs> Well, you can go into this very area, but it's very helpful. Go, you can go to this very area. But watch your steps, please. Watch your steps. Thank you. 